In today's video, I survived for 200 days in Hardcore Better Minecraft. If you haven't seen my previous video and you don't know what Better Minecraft is, it is this incredible mod pack that takes regular Minecraft to the next level. This mod pack fills your world with gorgeous biomes to explore that are teeming with life, gigantic structures that will blow your mind, highly dangerous dungeons that are taunting you with their promises of loot, and so, so, so many creatures that really want you dead. In the previous 100 days, I was able to fight my way up the food chain where I achieved full protection for diamond armor and weapons. Weapons. However, in this world, those are only the bare minimum to get by. That's why in this video, I've tasked myself to become as powerful as inhumanly possible so I could crush anything that dares to approach me. And let me just say, throughout these 100 days, a lot of things approached me. From dragons, to Baraka the Sun Chief, to the alchemist boss himself. Things got interesting. So as always, don't forget to watch until the end, but first, if you do enjoy my content, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed and joined the Domination Nation. We are currently 350,000 strong and on our way to that massive 1 million, and I cannot do it without all of your beautiful faces. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like to please the YouTube algorithm. If this video gets to 30,000 likes, I will do 300 days of better Minecraft. And one last amazing thing, today's this video is the beginning of a brand new partnership between me and Apex Gaming PCs. Because of all your continued support for the content that I make, I was able to come together with these awesome people to make my very own custom line of gaming PCs for all of you. If you go and check out the link in the description or the pinned comment below, you can go to my page and check out or even customize any of the PCs. I made three custom tiers that I rightfully named Gold, Diamond, and Netherite because each of these bad boys will let you play Minecraft at even higher qualities. From fancy graphics and high render distances to huge mod packs full of content, similar to this one, to even shaders such as the one that I used in the RLCraft series, each of these PCs can give you a great experience playing Minecraft and most other games, to be honest. And once again, I really wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because of all of you supporting me, it really does mean the world to me. And if you do find yourself interested in these PCs, don't forget to check out the link below and use code PAIN at checkout for an extra 5%. Thank you all so, so much. And let's get right to day 201. On the first day, day 101, I loaded into my world dazed and confused since I hadn't really been here in about a month. I began looking through my inventory to see what I had, and I remembered that there was armor much, much better than diamond, and I still needed to upgrade to it. And then I found it. There was a type of armor called fusion armor that was made by fusing resources into ingots by using fusion ore, which can be found in the abyss mod. So I used the A key to favorite all of these items for future reference, and then it happened. On my very first day back, a blood moon had risen. So you know what? I thought I would go out and hunt some easy mobs because I mean, what could go wrong, right? So I started targeting creepers for more fireworks until I found myself directly in the middle of this horde of League of Legends players. And not gonna lie, this was scary. I was poisoned, I had slowness and hunger, and I could barely get away without getting clowned on by some of the creepers. The gunpowder has come full circle. But after all of that had kind of settled down, I did manage to get away with my life intact, and I decided, you know what, since I'm a little rusty at better Minecraft, maybe I'll just spend the Blood Moon organizing my inventory and repairing my now melted armor with some late night capitalism. Overall, today was a rough start. But that was okay because on day 102, I was awake and ready from the all-nighter that I was forced to pull. I began looking into what the Abyss mod was, and it turned out to be a dimension that I could get to by harvesting Loran gems from these bright light blue flowers that are supposedly spread throughout the world that I could then combine with obsidian to make the portal to the new dimension. Yes, that was a mouthful. So I grabbed my fireworks and I began flying around in the hopes of finding some of these flowers, which were supposedly easy to find in most biomes. I kept flying around while checking any flowers that I could until I found another one of those small little bandit camps. And that's when I decided that their stuff was now my stuff. I quickly swooped in and landed on their roof and I began smacking these dudes around and surprisingly they smacked back pretty hard. 
I don't know what's up with me today, but things were doing so much more damage than I remembered. But all was good because one by one, I banished each of them to the Shadow Realm before stealing their single gold apple and coal, which was totally worth this fight. Anyways though, shortly after moving on from there, I found a nearby field full of the exact flowers that I was looking for. They were apparently called Lauren flowers and they were everywhere surrounding this village. So I spent the rest of the day just kind of collecting as many of them as I could before getting attacked by this bird and her children, apparently. And thanks to me, this world now had four more orphans. On the morning of day 103, now that I had the Loran crystals that I needed, I was done here. But before leaving, I did see two more nearby dungeon towers that I quickly flew over to so I could borrow all of their life savings. I flew over to the first one and I stole all of their gold blocks and the waystone from the roof, and I quickly made my way down each floor while checking all of the basic chests and breaking the spawners. After finishing up there, I was off to the second one where I did pretty much the same thing minus the getting trolled by a vex with a sharpness sword. It was really starting to seem like the people of this world did not respect the protection for Diamond Trip. However, now that their loot was my loot, I flew back over to the village and I used the waystone to teleport back to my base so I could begin preparing to go to the abyss. And honestly, I had no clue what I was doing wrong here. I used an Eye of Ender and some paper along with the gems to make something called an Activation Scroll, which unlocked the Abyss Chapter 2 book, apparently, because I still could not craft it or the Unstable Obsidian. So I went online to do some research, and I'm just gonna say this now, I hate mods like this. They have no information at all online, and the only information that I could find was super conflicting. I spent the entire night testing out different ways to get the Obsidian, and I did find out that there's a quest system with rewards that you can go into, and there was a step-by-step -step for this mod. However, I still can't craft the obsidian. By the time it was the morning, I had no clue what to do, until I noticed a comment online that matched some of the text inside of the guide. Apparently, I had to kill something called a void worm before I could get the obsidian. Which doesn't make much sense, because that is not what I've seen other YouTubers do in their videos, but you know what? I'm not gonna argue with it. Whatever. So on day 104, I continued looking on the wiki and apparently there's some dream world that you're supposed to enter two times before you can progress, which doesn't make any sense because it didn't happen at all and it's supposed to happen the first few times you sleep in your world, but I, I honestly, I don't know. The wiki for this mod, complete trash. So for today, instead, I was just gonna hang around the base testing out things until the sun went down, where I could hopefully sleep and maybe enter this dream world now that I've unlocked the book, but yeah. Anyways, since I didn't have anything else to do for today, I decided to test out something that a lot of you mentioned in the comments of the last 100 days video. Apparently, vein mining that I have on my diamond axe only works when you crouch. So I flew over to the nearby forest to test it out, and all of you were right. I could now easily explode my stick trading empire. Plus, each time I use the vein miner, it automatically replaces the saplings underneath. Just imagine how much more work you could do in a vanilla world without having to spend a year chopping down trees. But yeah, that's... Pretty much all I did today. I chopped down a bunch of trees, did some stick trades with one of my prison uh, friends, and I organized the Hollywood into some new chests before the sun finally went down. So I stared at the bed in the hopes of going to some weird dream world or something, and um, nothing happened. Nothing at all. Good times. On day 105, I had finally figured it out. So apparently inside the quest book quest for the end, you are given exactly what you need to enter this dimension after you kill the void worm, which I kind of already knew, kinda. But today I figured out exactly how to find the void worm, because apparently they dwell in the void down below the end. In order to lure them out, you need to toss a mysterious worm down into the void, which you can only get by placing a crimson mosquito inside an endiophage capsid. Whatever that is. So I continued doing more research, and um, wow has this mod pack really become some kind of master riddle. After doing some research, I found the two different mobs that I now needed to hunt down for their drops. I needed to hunt down an endiophage, which would drop a capsid, and I needed to hunt down a crimson mosquito, which I also had no clue where to find, so I checked out the Alex's Mobs booked once again, and I finally knew where to go and what to do. After only five days, crimson mosquitoes can be found in crimson forests in the nether, and the endiophage can be found in the midlands biome in the end. So things were going to be easy now, hopefully. 
This is some foreshadowing? Things were not going to be easy. So on the next day, day 106, I used my waystone to teleport back to Paintopia and I went through the nether portal so I could find a crimson forest and hunt me some mosquitoes. So the second I spawned in, I began using my fireworks to fly around and search for the perfect location to farm them. And I did find a crimson forest, but technically it wasn't a crimson forest because apparently there are multiple crimson biomes now with the whatever mods that are changing the nether. However, while I was here, I did find find another one of those piglin towers with a chest inside that I decided to rush like the big brain player that I was. And these guys absolutely swarmed me. They did do a lot of damage, but for the most part I had things under control. That is, until I saw one of the piglin brutes began running to join in the fight. And I decided to make a temporary tactical retreat up the hill just in case, and I sat here sweeping up the remaining sussy bakas, including said brute. And now that they were all gone, I could yoink the rest of their loot, which didn't end up being much, but I did score myself four more netherite scrap, so this wasn't an entire waste of time. Anyways though, now that my Minecraft bank had become slightly more thick with three Cs, I set back out looking for that crimson biome. And surprise, surprise, I was distracted yet again, and this time by this really nice looking bastion with an easy target open chest room with a conveniently placed nearby platform to shoot off of. So I landed down nearby and I sat here yeeting each and every piglin that I saw out of existence before bridging over to loot the two chests, which turned out to be mostly subpar loot minus the one additional netherite scrap. For day 107, I continued to assert my dominance over this bastion by now raining down arrows on any and every remaining piglin that I could see before I could make my way down there. And once it was mostly safe, I jumped onto the soul sand in the middle to check the chest and there really wasn't much inside and honestly, I didn't really feel like looting the rest of this place because my luck with bastions in this world have been trash. So I kind of just left to continue flying around so I could find that crimson biome. And boy have I never wanted to see a crimson biome this bad in my life. I kept finding crimson like biomes that weren't what I needed and I was quickly burning through my stack of fireworks. But that was not going to stop me. I kept exploring for the next two days, day 108 and 109, and of course, I made some more stops along the way. I first ran into another one of those piglin towers that I wiped out like the plague that they were, while also stealing any more of their netherite scraps. And shortly after that tower, I found myself sniping away more piglins and more piglin brutes at another scuffed bastion, only for pretty much more of the same basic loot. Overall, I kept exploring until the end of day 109, where I pretty much ran out of fireworks, so I crafted myself a quick nether portal in the nether, and because I didn't have any flint or steel, I took advantage of one of the nearby step gas shooting at me so he could light up my portal. And after that, I ran back through to the overworld. On day 110, after leaving the nether portal, I found myself in this really bright and vibrant mangrove biome with a pretty big villager bandit camp right next door. And when I say pretty big, I mean massive. For some reason, this place was full of triple arrow shooting bandit boys, and they would not stop loading me up with arrows for even a second. I was hitting them with my sword, but I was quickly being forced to switch to my bow because they just kind of sat here shooting me over into the water. Overall, I ended up being stuck here throughout most of the night, taking them out one by one because these guys wouldn't even let me leave the water. I don't know what was wrong with this place or why they had their own cracked esports team, but by the time I finally finished cleaning most of them up and I stole all of their loot, which was not very much worth it in the slightest, may I add, I went to sleep for the night so I could begin exploring this new part of the world during the peace of daytime. So on day 111, after waking up, the first thing I did was continue exploring around this hellish bandit camp while taking out the super annoying remaining crossbow jerks. I looted their last two houses, if you can call them that, and there still wasn't anything crazy inside, but I did find a bunch more bread, a ton of wolfer beds, some more slime, and other just random junk. I finished stuffing what loot I could into my inventory, and I was finally on my way to that cursed place until I spotted another one of those tiny little dirt huts in the distance. So I broke my way inside violently, I tore up their carpet, and I made my way down to their basement. Still a weird sentence, not gonna lie. Anyways, the chest down here had another golden apple inside, along with an ice dragon egg. And yes, I know, I can get dragons by using these eggs, but I want a fire dragon and I haven't found one of those yet, 
So do not worry, a fire dragon will soon be ours. Along with the lizard from the first 100 days. It might not happen now, but I definitely want both of those things to happen. However, for now, since my inventory was kind of messed up, I sat here organizing it for a bit, and I moved on to the next thing, which just so happened to be this nearby village that was full of villagers. Like, I mean, more full than normal. There were so many villagers here. So like the true alpha gamer that I am, I exploited them all simultaneously by going around and stealing from each house. And let me tell you, this place was pretty busted. Each chest had tons of iron, more wool, loads of bread, some emeralds, and other random loot inside. This place was so profitable, and these kind guys gave me all of this loot for free, which is crazy. It's crazy how that works. Anyways, by the time I finished borrowing all of their things, the sun became scared of me and began hiding. So unlike real life, I decided to have a sleepover with my new friends and go to sleep at a decent time. On day 112, after leaving the village, I found myself once again robbing more people of their belongings. I found another one of these portal guy's houses that I quickly yoinked of anything that had value inside and it didn't end up being much, but right next door there was an abandoned portal that had two shiny golden blocks that were placed there just for me. And while collecting those gold blocks, I noticed another mob tower off in the distance. And what can I say? I like loot. So I flew over to this island where I crafted myself a boat and I quickly traversed my way across the water so I could get these gold blocks and waystone at the top of the tower. After getting here, I speed ran my way through each floor by breaking the spawner and killing each mob until I hit the last floor where I broke the cursed vex spawner because even with diamond protection for armor, they do way too much damage. And after breaking the last spawner, I began looting the chests and I stole all of the gold blocks and the waypoint up top and I was going to go back down to check the bottom floor chest until this surprise vex smacked me across my cheeks. So instead, I did what I like to call a tactical retreat, and I jumped off the top of the tower where I flew all the way over to this gorgeous looking house that had tons of free anvils, an iron block, and so, so, so much more free stuff. And at this point, my Pixar mom of an inventory was weighing me down. So I plopped down some shulkers and I dumped all of my findings inside for that squeaky clean inventory that everyone loves. Now that this place had been looted, I was back out on my journey, and believe it or not, I actually did have a goal while out here. I was looking for paper, sugarcane, and more gunpowder so I could make more fireworks. Future pain here, at this point in the story, I forgot that I had a trader that I could buy fireworks from from the first 100 days, so I may have wasted a little bit of time doing this. Future pain out. So as I continued exploring, I began grabbing any and all sugarcane that I could find, and as the sun had began to set, I flew over to this small cabin of hunters that both dropped their cheap enchanted weapons after I crushed their KD ratios, and upon looking at their attic, I found the mother load of free steak and apples. For day 113, I set out from the Hunter's Lodge ready to explore some of the nearby structures. I first stopped by the exact same building that I lived in to check on the villagers just in case any of them actually had any good enchantments, and massive surprise, none of these guys were useful. How relatable. So since both the villagers and their loot were of no use to me, I continued on my way until I saw yet another one of those giant monstrosity dungeon looking buildings. And if you remember what I said in the first 100 days, I wanted to come back to these and this ended up being kind of a big mistake. I grabbed my elytra with the very few fireworks that I had and I flew up to the very top in the hopes of stealing some easy chests craft style. And it turns out that each of the spawners up here spawn these super scary skeleton riders on top of phantoms. And these guys didn't really do much damage, but their knockback hit like Saitama. I had to keep taking pop shots from them in the distance just to take them out because close combat was not really a choice at this point. Anyways, after playing clean up with the competition, I ran in and broke the spawner as fast as I could and I still still managed to spawn more before doing that. These spawners were onto my strats. They spawned the mobs so fast that it was pretty much impossible to run in and break them scot-free. But that still didn't stop me. And to be honest, the loot inside of these chests wasn't that bad, but also wasn't really that good. After looting the first chest, I flew in and broke three more spawners, while also quickly yoinking any relevant loot from the chest before being yeeted, and as the sun started to go down, I was gone. Those chests were way too much work for the small amount of loot that I had gotten. Even vanilla end cities give better loot than this. 
These dungeons had me missing RL Craft real bad. So after leaving that giant waste of time, I flew my way down to this brand new mob tower where I quickly Detroit smashed the Vex spawner and stole all of the gold in the brand new waystone. On day 114, after finishing looting the mob tower, I was looking through my mod settings for the mod map in this mod pack because I realized that I hadn't really had it on this entire time. I've literally been ignoring one of the most useful mods in the pack. And now that I had the map on, I was checking out what was nearby and I saw this weird bulge in the snowy part of the map. So I decided to go check it out and it ended up being this woodland mansion, uh, minus the wood and the land apparently, because this place is made entirely of ice and snow. I broke inside and I began exploring around while not really finding much. And I slayed a couple of mobs here and there and I stole the massive pile of their bookshelves for some more future juicy capitalism. After after this, I continued exploring each floor and there really wasn't much stuff to borrow. I know these buildings usually have hidden chests, but I didn't really want to waste that much time struggling to get them, so I made my way down to the bottom floor where I found some nice creepers to hunt for some more gunpowder. And that's when I was absolutely clowned on. While fighting this pile of mobs with a creeper in the middle, my stepbro skeleton shot me from behind directly into the center of the mobs, causing the first creeper to explode. And to make things worse, my shield was now stun locked, so all I could do was sit here and watch as the second creeper ran in and caused me to lose a totem of undying. And after that, I was beyond done here. I quickly ate a gapple just in case, and I quickly fled out the front door never to come back. After this, I stopped by a near house to re-equip a totem and dump out my inventory, and I was once again on my way. I continued going in the same direction so I could leave this cursed biome until I noticed something in the distance. There was a snow desert temple. So unlike the massive five head that I usually have, I instead did a small brain move where I entered the temple and I began breaking my way down slowly because everything was snow when I didn't have a shovel. And this is where my small brain came into action because upon breaking some of the ice, the blocks slid into the pressure plates DMs, causing everything to go up in smoke. So I very, very, very quickly ran my way back up the stairs to dodge the explosions where I was greeted by a pile of snow skeletons or whatever you call them because I always forget their name because nobody cares about them. And I, I just kind of fled. I was done with this place. I quickly ran out of the front door never to come back to any snow biomes in this world ever again. On day 115, I started off the day by making the questionable decision of killing an illusioner with a banner without recording. So I now had the curse of the simps. So what did I do with this, you may ask? Well, I grabbed my fireworks and I flew to the nearest giant village on the map to test out just how bad the raids are in better Minecraft. Because I mean, what can go wrong, right? So I landed on top of the nearby mob tower. I broke the Vex spawner. And I stole all of the loot off of the roof and I blocked off the staircase just in case anyone made their way up to me. And once the raid had finally began, things got crazy fast. There was some kind of summoner mob that summoned these super fast running micro creepers that made me so happy that I was not down there. So for the first wave, I sat up here sniping people from the heavens until the second wave spawned in and things got even more interesting. So I decided to get a little bit quirky and relatable, and I flew down onto one of the nearby village roofs, where I sat here sniping away at any pillager that I saw until I had to hunt down the remaining two guys. Overall, wave two was cool, but not that bad. But then, then wave three spawned. And honestly, just, just look at this giant Minecraft dungeons looking guy. Do you think I'm gonna fight a guy like that? I sat here sniping him until I learned exactly what the creeper summoners really do. They literally began spawning piles of creepers on top of me while I was on top of the building. So I began building up and up until I was shot off my pillar into the pile of creepers down below. I quickly built back up and fled to the trees to finish taking out the enemies. I sniped down the Minecraft dungeons looking golem and he dropped one iron ingot, which was worse than iron golems. What a scam. Anyways, during this part of the raid, there was only one enemy left and the sun had gone down, so I used this moment to clear out my inventory and repair my very almost broken bow boy before finishing the raid the next day. However, it seemed that my bow had become a lost cause now. The absolute cheapest I could repair this thing for was a whopping 65 levels, and after that it was going to cost 127. It was kind of looking like I might have to switch to a mending bow soon. So I finished cleaning up and I just went to sleep for the night. On the next day, day 116, it was back to the raid grind. 
I quickly took out the last couple of witches to finish off the last wave, and I was now speechless. The next wave was massive, and everyone had diamond armor. There were so many different mobs, including Vex, which made hiding on roofs no longer viable. I began taking pop shots with what was left of my bow until I was knocked down by a Vex, and that's where I made the executive decision to fly back up to the nearby mob tower just for some safety. And I mean, just, just look at the mobs down there. Things were getting insane. I stood up here watching them run around for a bit until I decided it would be wise for me to go back home and make a new bow. So I placed down a waystone and I named it Struggle Village because I mean, that's what this place was at this point. And I went back home for the night where I enchanted bow after bow until I ended up with this Power 5 Unbreaking 3 Flame Punch 2 bow with mending that I named Tamashi no Kiyomi, which is Japanese for soul resonance. Let me know which anime that's from in the comments. Anyways, now that I had a much, much stronger and more fixed up bow boy, I was ready to head back and cause chaos. But first, on day 117, I realized that I was pretty sure I had a villager that sold fireworks. It's been a while since I played this world, and yeah, it turns out I was harvesting all of that sugarcane for literally zero reason. However, everything was still good. No, it was great, because after buying several stacks from the end villager, his final trades were shulker shells and ender dragon heads. I could literally buy infinite shulkers, and I was so hyped about it. But anyways, now that I had everything that I needed, I went back to that village to begin the massive bow montage. I flew down from the mob tower and I began slaying like the king that I was. I very quickly blew through all three stacks of arrows that I had, so I was forced to go in for some close combat, where I carefully picked off each of the dangerous enemies one group at a time. And there were some pretty insane fights here. The Illusioners gave me 14 seconds of pitch black darkness that would most likely lead to my death if I hadn't had an Elytra. And there was also the Staff Guy from Minecraft Dungeons that gave me Levitation. But no matter how powerful these chumps were, one by one each of these monsters fell until finally I was down to the very last enemy. Except I could not find him anywhere. I legit searched for the rest of the night until the sun came up, and I looked everywhere. I even tried using one of the village bells to find him, but either they just didn't work in this mod pack, or for the more likely reason, everybody was dead, so it was no longer a village. Either way, this day was finally over. So it was now day 118, and I was ready to finally finish this raid. That is, except the second the sun had finished rising, the raid bar disappeared. Yep. It turns out I took too long to defeat it. All I had to do was take out one more guy, and I would get my capitalism buff. But since the game hates me, no. So now that the raid was over, I flew back to the tower, I quickly dumped off my inventory, and I built myself another perfectly sized, and definitely not too big, nether portal so I could stop being distracted and go back to searching for the Crimson Forest like I should have been doing in the first place. But now I needed a flint and steel. So I teleported back to my base where I found the 36 extra shulker shells that I had sitting in my chest that I may have forgotten about. So I crafted 18 new shulkers, I filled my ender chest with the remaining, and I grabbed my flint and steel so I could go back to the nether and finally, hopefully, find that mosquito. So now that my ender chest was all set and I had the flint and steel, it was back to the struggle village where I lit the portal and I jumped through to begin my second journey to find that stupid mosquito. And as much as I would love to say this was quick and easy, it was the exact opposite. I tried using the minimap to find Crimson Biome, except every Crimson Biome was replaced with Crimson Gardens, which was apparently different. I legit spent another three days flying around the nether with zero luck. This mod pack really did not want me to summon that void worm, I swear. I was at this until about day 122 when I finally said screw it and I built another nether portal so I could go back to the overworld where I found myself surrounded by another pillager bandit camp. At this point, I was really cursed. I felt like I was I felt like I was Subaru in the first season of ReZero, living the same suffering over and over again. So I checked out the map for the nearest safe area to place a waypoint, and I flew over to another replica of my base. These days, things were definitely, definitely rough. So on day 123, at this point, I had choices. I was reading the Alex Mobs book until I realized that the mosquito part of the book mentioned regular overwood flies transforming when they enter the nether. So I made a creative world to test this out, and it did work, but the process seemed absolutely awful. 
After this, I began watching other videos on better Minecraft that seemed to have so much more than this version, and that's when I realized that they made a version called Better Minecraft Plus that had so much more than this version of the mod, including Ice and Fire. So that explained why everything was missing and why the Abyss mod was pretty much unusable in this version. So now I had a couple of options. I could either add some of the missing mods like Ice and Fire, which would make this version have real endgame armor that I could work towards, or I could try to load this world in the other mod pack, which might corrupt it. Which, I mean, I could just back it up, but either way I was kind of at a loss here. Or so I had thought. Because after doing exactly that, backing up my world, and throwing the save file into Better Minecraft Plus, everything that I could tell was working perfectly. I still had all of my gear, along with my new slots on my character, including the Tool Belt mod. They had added the Tool Belt mod. Literally God tier mod. There was now so much better stuff to earn, such as fire and ice items, all of the waypoints were still working, and all if not most of all my villagers and my loot was still back at my base. The only thing that I 100% knew was missing was the ender bag and backpacks, which was a shame. However, in comparison to using an ender chest, it didn't really make much difference. So either way, Better Minecraft Plus was insane. This mod pack just became the combination of Better Minecraft and Arlcraft, and I was so excited to see all of the new things. As the sun began to rise on day 124, I was already beginning to realize just how different this world had become in Better Minecraft Plus, because right there on my map was a mutant skeleton, which not gonna lie, the only reason I know what that is was a Mr. Beast video. Anyways, I wanted to begin the new journey by taking this guy down, so I did some quick capitalism with the boys for some arrows, since my infinity bow was now replaced by a banana. No reference there. And now that I had ammo, it was time for the 1v1 of the century. I began shooting this guy into absolute oblivion until he could no longer handle the pressure, and he just kind of exploded. Very relatable and quirky of him. After winning the fight, I had jumped down to see what he had dropped, and apparently I could pick up his skull and all of his bones. I guess today was indeed a bone day, and that it was because after re-entering my base, I kept discovering more new things. First off, my dragon eggs that I had from the other mod were unfortunately gone because of ice and fire, which sucked, but apparently having an ender chest in your inventory opened this option to instantly access my chest from my inventory without even placing it. So, not having the Ender backpack was honestly not even that big of a deal anymore. For the rest of this day, I just kind of hung out in my base while being overwhelmed by the sheer mass of new content that Better Minecraft Plus had added. And on top of everything, the Abyss mod looks like it might actually work now, too! Which gave me something extra to work towards. So on day 125, I cleaned out my inventory and I teleported to the newest waypoint so I could begin hunting for new structures and maybe even some dragons for new armor. And not long after setting out, I found this super sus looking swamp house that looked mostly abandoned, or at least I had hoped. I broke inside from the roof and I began stealing everything from barrels and chests, and that's when I began finding bones and skulls. And they were literally everywhere, and I know what you're thinking. Why is he taking entire skeletons? And my answer to that question is, um, don't worry about it. Overall, while I was here, I found these cool skeletons. I found a pile of heads, a wither skeleton hand, and some free coal blocks. And I know what you're thinking, again, why is he taking these literal body parts and bones and stuff? And I'm going to once again reiterate, don't worry about it. They're cool decorations that I could use for maybe a spooky room or something in the future. Anyways, at this point, I felt like I was kind of pushing my luck, so I left that swamp before whatever made all of those skeletons decided to come back. That is, assuming it wasn't my dad, because he probably never will. So I flew out of this place and I continued looking for new structures to explore while checking the map for dragons until I found this ugly looking stone temple thing. So I landed nearby and emptied out my inventory into one of my shulkers, and that's when I noticed something only slightly concerning. The forest in the distance was on fire, and that fire was pretty suspicious. It was almost like a dragon's fire. So I checked my map, and boom, there was a nearby ice dragon nest on the map. However, that didn't really make much sense because ice dragons don't start fires, so Something was off. I mean, the ice and fire mod changes quite often, so I guess you just never know. So I clenched my cheeks and I slowly began approaching where the dragon should be until I saw it. And it was also already dead somehow. So I made my way up to its den until I heard one of the most terrifying growls I had ever heard in Minecraft. 
It turns out that the fire had come from a nearby red fire dragon that took down this blue boy in all of his glory. So, do you know what I did? If you guessed steal all of the easy dragon skills and bones, and then run away as fast as you could, you would be very right. After picking up the rest of the scales and bones, I flew up into this nearby slime island where I placed down a waystone as the sun began going down. After this, I checked my inventory and I kid you not, that dragon dropped me the exact amount of scales that I needed to craft myself a full set of dragon armor. This new mod pack was cracked. So I teleported back home since it was thunderstorming and I went to sleep so I could build my new armor the next day. On day 126, the very first thing I did was craft myself an entire set of sapphire dragon armor. And now that I had the armor, I was going to need four mending books, four protection four books, and four unbreaking three books to fully enchant each of them into god tier armor. So I began the great trading cycle once again. I traded tons of books and sticks for emeralds whenever the villagers had refreshed their trades, and I began buying all the protection two books that I could to combine into protection four. That is until I ran out of emeralds once again, and all of my traders were done for the night once the sun had gone down. So I went to sleep for the night, and first thing in the morning of the next day, it was back to that juicy capitalism. I first laid out my chest and put all of my armor inside it to see what I needed. And I had already traded for all four mending books and I had two of the four protection four books that I was going to need. So I went back to the villagers to keep checking their trades until this intruder enderman ran into my base and me being the massive five head gamer that I am, I smacked him in the face. And that's when I learned just who I was up against. This enderman had protection four and he was so so unreasonably strong he did way more damage than he should have and wow was i glad my dragon armor was almost ready because i was tired of this and i collected my surprising amount of drops from him before getting back to my capitalistic mission i continued trading different resources for emeralds and combining books until i had all four protection four enchantments that i was going to need and one of the unbreaking three ones things were quickly starting to come together however i was now super poor when it came to levels and i was going to need a ton more to get those last three unbreaking three books, let alone combine everything together into books and add them to my dragon armor. So I figured it was time to pay a good visit back to my good old fashioned XP farm from the first 100 days. And boy was this a different experience with all of the newly added mods. While I was grinding XP, random enchanted mobs with abilities would spawn in making crazy noises and after defeating them they dropped random enchanted bottles and music discs along with a ton more XP than normal. Overall, I continued this process of grinding XP, trading with villagers, and combining more unbreaking books until day 129 when I finally had all of the enchantments that I needed. So on day 130, it was back to the XP farm for the remaining amount of XP that I was going to need for my brand new full set of Gucci Dragon Armor. And boy did this take so much XP to combine everything. I sat here until the end of day 133 just slaying away at more mobs for enough XP to one by one combine all of my enchanted books into single books before finally adding all of them to my dragon scale armor. And this process was pretty rough because each piece of armor costed an additional 24 levels of XP to finally enchant even after all the XP that I had already used building up the books. However, this was all worth it in the end, because once I finished my final piece of armor, I took off that decrepit and weak gross diamond armor, and I threw on this gorgeous set of dragon armor. And boy, did I look amazing in this. The blue goes with the purple on my skin perfectly, plus my armor is now significantly more cracked than before. I now had an additional 3 extra defense over top of my original bar of 10. On day 134, now that I have my completely gorgeous armor, I began checking out what kinds of dragon weapons I could make, and that's when I stumbled upon the dragon sword that could be upgraded into absolutely busted variants, such as a flame sword and this super sick looking lightning blade that matched my channel colors perfectly. So, of course, like the massive Chad gamer that I was, I now had to figure out how I was going to get the remaining wither bones to craft myself these decadent looking swords. And it turned out they dropped from cockatrice, which supposedly spawn in savannas. 
At least according to the wiki, that is. So I marked my closest savannah looking biome on the map, and I began my short journey there. However, while on the way there, I spotted a quick and easy mob tower with a free waystone and some gold on top. So I quickly landed on it and ran downstairs so I could break the vex spawner so I didn't have to deal with it, and that's when my mind melted. Because apparently one of the mods in this mod pack literally lets me pick up spawners with silk touch. This changed everything. I was about to become the fire nation towards these mobs. So of course, like the man of culture that I was, I ran down the stairs stealing every spawner that I saw while absolutely freaking out. And things didn't stop here. I went to check on the loot in each of the chests, expecting the, you know, typical garbage, but no. With all of these new mods, these chests now actually had things of value inside. I found a bunch of new items, including my first ring that gave me plus one armor, and I began just freaking out. This new update had me in love with this mod pack. So after I sat there freaking out over all of that loot, I went back to the top to collect the reasons why I actually came here. At this point, it was now nighttime and raining, and uh... The day really flies by while looting, I'll tell you that. So on day 135, after waking up and cleaning out my inventory, I set back off towards the savannah from yesterday. And upon arriving there, it turned out to be a rocky mountains instead, which didn't have any cockatrice in sight, so I kept flying until I noticed a dragon's nest. And that's when my greatest nightmare became reality. I went to F5 to look for the dragon, and he was right behind me! But I wasn't scared because I had an elytra and fireworks, right? He couldn't catch up. Could he? Well, get this. Apparently in the new Fire and Ice versions, dragons can maintain the speed of your freaking fireworks. And this man would not leave me alone for anything. This was terrifying. It was kind of like that movie with the bus that was going to run out of gas and there was a bomb inside of the bus. And the second that the bus ran out of gas or stopped, it, you know, just... Boom. That's, that's kind of like the situation. I was flying away from the dragon as fast as I could, burning through the remaining fireworks that I had, which was not that many, and I could not get away. I also did not have a waystone in my inventory, so I couldn't just land and quickly bail. If this guy caught up to me, I have no clue if I could survive it or not yet. And that's when I realized that I was heading directly towards Paintopia with my villagers. And that's when I had this Vsauce level pro gamer idea to quickly land and bail by using the Waystone. So I did exactly that. I'm now pretty sure that I could never go back there again to see any of my villagers. At least until I'm strong enough to take on the dragon, I guess. Either way, this is one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had in Minecraft for sure. And from now on while flying, I am carrying ender pearls and a waystone just in case I need to bail quickly from any dragons nearby. I mean, at the end of the day, this kind of helped me out though, because I was now prepared. And now that I was prepared for the literal worst case scenario, I set back out from my base in the direction that I've already traveled to, hoping to find some new structures. And I spent the rest of this day stopping at villages and stealing their waystones, until I found another battle tower that I spent the rest of the night stealing the spawners and looting all of the chests from. For the next day, day 136, I immediately set out, leaving the tower behind, and the very first thing I saw was this giant's lair. And today, I wanted to conquer something. So, I sat here sniping him with a bow until he stopped taking damage. So I got even closer by swimming into the nearby water while hitting him with the old razzle dazzle until he dropped to the ground. And this dude dropped me his eye which just so happens to be a legendary weapon that gives weakness to nearby enemies. Anyways, while fighting this guy, he broke some of the nearby palm tree, which dropped a palm sapling, and this had given me a grand idea, because one of the mods had spawned starfish and other little beach items all around the ground that just looked so nice. So I decided to why not pick them all up, so that way I can make a nice tropical area in the future, if I ever decide to do that. And honestly, I get distracted by some of the dumbest things sometimes, I swear. But anyways, after I finished collecting all of the easy to get starfish, I set back off towards this pirate ship with one thing on my mind. At the center of each ship was a Vindicator spawner that I could use to make an Emerald Farm Baby. So I flew around taking some pretty pro gamer shots, killing a bunch of them until I felt it was safe enough to land on the ship and begin absolutely devastating their forces. That is, until the Vindicator spawner in the middle spawned a very special enemy that did way more damage than he should have. In fact, this guy ended up knocking me off of the ship. So I shot him in the face a couple of times and I flew back up to collect my winnings, which ended up being two diamonds 
in that very important Vindicator spawner from the center. However, I was not finished harassing these pillagers yet because there were two more beached pillager ships in the distance and these things were absolutely cracked. I spent my whole night fighting my way through and these had so much loot. There were tons of chests everywhere that were full of fish that I didn't really need. However, hidden among them were chests full of iron, gold, emeralds, and other insane loot. Along with all of these chests were two separate captain quarters that had all kinds of new items that I've never seen before. They had spirit orbs, lore fragments, blank scrolls, along with these books called tattered tomes that gave me levels when I right clicked them. By the time I had finished looting both of these ships and clearing out all of the enemies, it had become morning and I had gotten 17 diamonds, two stacks plus two additional emeralds, a stack and a half of gold, a stack in 19 iron, and something called a dagger of greed that had some pretty cool effects when attacking pillagers, including the ability to get bad omen without a captain, which technically means I could also make a raid farm by using the pillager spawner in the future. On day 137, after leaving the two ships, I flew over to the nearby base full of villagers while not thinking, and I accidentally started a raid for them. So, me being the good guy that I am, I did what I thought was right, and I left them to deal with it by themselves. It was not my problem, because I was now on to another nearby pillager ship, and this one had pretty much the same as the first two. I got a whole bunch more iron... I got emeralds, gold, and a bunch more levels from those tattered tomes, along with a bunch more things that I had no clue what to do with, and some pretty decent enchanted books. By the time I was finished borrowing all of their stuff, it was now nighttime, and for some reason also thundering, so again, I just went to sleep because I didn't want to deal with it. For day 138, it's kind of difficult to explain what happened because literally so much did. The very first thing I decided to do after waking up was fly up to the top of the massive pillager castle that happened to be next door, so that way I could break into the attic and steal all of the OP loot with minimum effort. I quickly ran in and I broke all of the spider spawners first because they basically did no damage to me and I didn't really want to deal with them as I struggled to stuff all of the loot into my inventory. And after I cleaned up all the spawners, I began looting each and every chest and barrel with absolutely no interference at all from the piles of evokers below, which honestly, I probably should have just done this in the first 100 days in the first place, but I didn't really have an elytra, so things didn't work out like that. While I was up here, I honestly felt like a kid in a candy store. I could be here all day talking about just all the loot that I had gotten from these chests because there was just so much of it and not just the typical loot either. There were special items like rings that had crazy abilities. I found spell stones and I found the holy grail. Not like figuratively or anything, literally. I found the holy grail. But anyways, after finishing up all of the loot in here, I really didn't want to take on the pillager outpost down below because I wanted to become more godlike first before I came back and exterminated every one of these cursed buildings that dare to exist in my world. So with like 10 shulkers full of loot, I left to continue my search for the cockatrice until I had finally found my first real savanna. Except once again, there were no cockatrice in sight. But I did find another dragon's den with no dragon in sight either, which honestly terrified me. So I left towards the nearby desert where I found a nice village that I was going to use to finally go home. That is until I found this really interesting statue that kind of had a Legend of Zelda vibe, because apparently those spirit orbs that I had been finding could be traded to the statue for either health or stamina. However, stamina decided to work, because that doesn't really make sense, but you know what, whatever. And this is when I realized that during this whole trip of looting, every spirit orb that I had found, I had taken with me. So I sorted through my shulkers to find them, and just like that, I had gotten an additional two hearts of hardcore health. This mod pack was insane. So for future reference, I placed down a waystone next to the statue so I could continue to trade for more health. And right after placing it down, I saw another one of those statues directly across from the first. So now that there was two and I wasn't risking losing anything if it did happen to break and not drop, I tried picking it up and it literally dropped me the statue. I'm not used to mod packs being this forgiving. In Arlcraft, you couldn't pick up anything. At this point, I didn't know if it would still work if I placed it down anywhere, but I was still just as ecstatic nonetheless. And things today did not end here, because as I was messing around with my loot, I didn't notice the entire village around me's slow descent to zombiehood, until I turned around to see this whole horde of zombies with one with 
full diamond armor in the middle. And I kid you not, this thing hit me one time and broke my totem. I was terrified. What did this guy do to do that much damage? So I very quickly flew up to the nearby roof and I sat here sniping everyone until I was able to destroy the diamond boy. And upon destroying the last zombie, I jumped down to pick up its sword and I got like four achievements at once. It turns out that zombie had a pretty busted sword that had smite six, looting three, and unbreaking four on it. Today was insane. I was speechless. Also a little confused as to why smite did so much damage to me when I'm alive. Or am I? Anyways, for the next day, day 139, after that craziness that had been yesterday, I decided to teleport back home and take it easy for the day and sort out all of my inventory because my base is becoming an absolute train wreck. So the first thing I did was whip out all of the new shulker boxes to see the sheer mass of loot that I had accumulated. And after condensing all of the raw materials like emeralds, diamonds, gold, and iron into blocks, I had gotten almost Arlcraft levels of stonks. After this, I placed out the remaining loot-filled shulkers, and I began organizing them as well. And while organizing my shulkers, I also found out that Better Minecraft Plus actually has its own storage mod that it turns out is very easy to use and to make the resources to craft. So once I finally found a place that I 100% want to call home, I can have a full inventory that I no longer would have to organize, which would make this whole process so much easier. But in the meantime, I spent the rest of today and night pulling all of the useless items that I didn't really need from all of my chests and shulkers and yeeting them off of the edge of my base. During this process, I also disenchanted every piece of diamond gear that I had for some more easy XP before banishing them to the ground along with the rest of the trash. And by the time the sun had began rising, this is what the ground had looked like. On the next day, day 140, I spent more time organizing all of my inventory, including emptying the piles of shulkers that I had laid out everywhere. And not gonna lie, I kind of gave up organizing because after researching the storage mod, I found out that I would still need some kind of wall of chests. And honestly, I'm kind of tired of living here. So instead of spending the next couple of days organizing, I instead was going to set back out exploring in search of both cockatrice and a new place to call home. But first, since I could now pick up spawners, I teleported back to Crimes Against Cows, where I stole both the spawner and the waystone before flying back home for the night. But before sleeping, I also remembered to set up one last thing. I crafted myself a brand new tool belt so I could now more efficiently manage my inventory. And while looking for the recipe to upgrade the tool belt, I also found these crazy villager items that I could combine to apparently upgrade the brain of an iron golem. Which kind of gave me some real Frankenstein vibes, so of course I was going to check that out in the future. But anyways, I made a bunch of the tool belt upgrade pouches, and I blew through all of my crazy levels upgrading it as much as I could as the sun began to rise. And thus began day 141, and this day was once again crazy. The first thing I did was fast travel over to the health statue from before where I lost a totem and I began flying around looking for the savanna that must have been nearby and that is when I found it. I found my long awaited savanna biome and it had both a sun chief nearby and a teal sea serpent just chilling in the water. So after landing, I began taking some pop shots at the sea serpent, expecting it to fly into the sky and get stuck on land step sea serpent Arlcraft style, but uh, no. He just kinda sat here until I revoked his license to live. And he dropped me a solid 6 teal scales. Nice. So now that that absolutely crazy high stakes battle was over, not sarcasm, it was finally time to hunt down the sun chief like I said I would do in the first 100 days before I kind of ran out of time. Yes, I do remember it. So I ran in to begin slaying his underlings, and even though they basically couldn't touch me, it was still a lot of fun fighting them. I ran around two-shotting whoever got in my way until the Sun Chief began raining rays of light down upon me. So just in case I did any real damage, I ate a golden apple before trying to find him, and I kept hearing him, but I had no clue where he was. I knew they normally were sat in the center of the village, but this one was stuck on the side of a mountain, so I had no clue where he was. Until... I finally found him dug into the side of the hill, and that's when I went in for the kill before being yeeted into oblivion. However, that was not enough to stop me. I flew up with my elytra to begin shooting him in the face with my bow, and it devastated him. After only a couple of shots, he was getting real weak while firing off his new attacks. 
but I was still standing unfazed as I took the remaining shots to banish him to the Doom Dimension where he belonged. And now, not only did I have his nice golden mask, I apparently had an inventory full of the masks from his fallen comrades as well. These will make wonderful trophies for my new base once I find it. And overall, fighting these guys is a lot of fun. I really enjoy seeing mods like this that have really nice character models, crazy cool sound design, and just it just makes Minecraft so much more fun than it already was. Like, honestly, great mod pack. Anyways though, little miniature rant over, by the time the Sun Chief had fallen, it was now nighttime, and I was hoping to find some cockatrice spawning here at night. But instead, I found this giant mutant step skeleton that would not leave me alone. So I retreated into the nearby village where I found this interesting tower with a bestiary pedestal and a chest that I couldn't reach. I went outside to get some blocks for it and phantoms started spawning so I found the closest bed and I slept through the night to get rid of those sussy demon bakas. On day 142 the non-stop insanity didn't stop. I first left my borrowed house to find a goblin trader friend that immediately got blown up by this creeper. I'm sorry little dude, 07's in the chat. I stopped by the tower from yesterday where I grabbed the lectern and I built up to loot that chest up top. And after finishing the first tower, I found a second identical one where I ran into something massive. Apparently there's this giant ocean creature called a butterfly leviathan and I couldn't shoot it with my bow and I was not getting in close to that thing. So I broke into the building the safer way. I found my first bestiary book. I used some of the manuscript pages that were in here to research some things and I looted the chest up top. And for safety, I got as far away from this creature as I could after finishing up that building. I continued moving off in the other direction until I left the village to explore the two nearby ships in the ocean to get some more of those sweet vindicator spawners for more emeralds. Except I noticed a nearby rock that 100% had sirens on it, and I'm sure I could take them on, but for now, I really wasn't up for that challenge, just in case, because you never know what else is just kind of waiting over there. So instead, I continued searching the nearby savannas for more cockatrice, which, huge surprise here, was unsuccessful. After moving through the savanna, I looted this abandoned house near the village, and the upstairs chest had a two clean diamonds inside. After borrowing those diamonds, I noticed this strange altar nearby that I decided to check out. It was from yet another mod that I had zero clue what to do with, so I stole the main block and I tried to steal what looked important, but I couldn't break them. Maybe in the future I could end up figuring these out. On day 143, after finishing looting the nearby village in the savannah, I had changed my mind about dealing with those nearby ships because I was a strong and independent Minecraft player who didn't fear no sirens. So I flew in to begin taking pop shots at them and they had a giant butterfly leviathan protecting them for some not okay reason so it was mission abort. I tried flying away from the sirens and I could feel them pulling me back but as hard as they tried no mob can bring me down. So ignoring the sirens I landed on the first ship and I quickly began my assault taking out as many of these simps as I could before running in to steal the emerald spawner. But I was too late and an extra powerful tier 3 subscriber spawned in and did so much damage to me so I flew back up to catch my breath and eat a golden apple and that's when I realized that all of my golden apples were gone and I had no clue what happened. They weren't in my shulkers or my inventory, they were just gone. But I guess that was fine because after landing I finished off the last guy and I stole myself a brand new spawner along with the rest of their loot from the chests. And after that I flew over to the next boat for some good old fashioned reckless fighting with minimal blocking. Seriously, why do I why do I even have a shield? Half the time I don't use it. Anyways, though, after everyone on the top deck were gone, I broke through the floor, stole the Vindicator spawner, and I cleaned up the last few guys. And just like that, all their loot are belong to me. So now that I've borrowed all of their mortal possessions, I placed a waystone so I could teleport back home for the night to craft 30 more golden apples. Because once again, no clue what happened to those. Thank you, Minecraft. And I went to sleep for the night. After waking up on day 144, I fast traveled back to the ship where I continued my journey for a home. I mean, apparently, because obviously these biomes were not going to spawn in cockatrices anytime soon. And today was a day full of loot. I spent most of my time stopping by three more of those mob towers, where I stole all of the spawners inside, like a man of culture that I am. I looted each of the chests where I found more golden apples, I found scrolls, I got a ton more XP from those tattered tomes, which were just discount XP tomes when you think about it, but 
Yeah, that's all I've got. And finally, I found this interesting enchanted book that apparently makes me mine very fast, but never instantly. So like, it's kind of like efficiency, but worthless because you can't use beacons with it. Weird. But anyways, after finishing all three of these towers, I discovered a buried desert temple pyramid with some more pretty decent loot inside. I found more golden apples, more tattered tomes full of juicy XP, and another spirit orb which I absolutely love to find because they incentivize me to loot even more so I can get more hearts of health and figure out whatever stamina does. Either way, it was now nighttime in the desert, so I placed a bed and I slept the night away before leaving the temple. On day 145, the first thing I discovered upon waking up was how I could store both my bed and shulker boxes inside of my tool belt, which was an absolute massive wrinkly brain move that makes looting and exploring so much more fluent if I kept doing it throughout the series, because I'm pretty sure I forgot after this. After cleaning up my inventory and adding the new things to my tool belt, I built up from the loot room of the pyramid and I set back out to continue looking for a new place to call home. And throughout this day, I found pretty much anything but that. I first discovered a new village with a friendly giant who was casually walking around and storing villagers in his stomach to protect them. What a nice guy. However, I was not that nice. I shot him with my bow two times and he dropped. I guess the villagers maybe were eating him from the inside or something. Ironic how that works out. Anyways, after killing him and stealing his eye and skull, that's an interesting sentence, I was going to loot his cave until I saw the second giant who was hungry for my gamer meat. Sorry guys, but I'm not a big fan of that. So after leaving that Attack on Titan-esque village behind, I started flying over the ocean until I found this giant ship with black sails that I very bravely landed on where I started to fruit ninja all of these skeletons. And I guess these dudes were huge fans because they all just kind of stood here and, um, let me get a high score. After defeating the entire top deck, I went into the captain's quarters where I 1v1 this guy perfectly while taking zero damage like the pro gamer that I am. And this is future pain talking here. I don't know if that was sarcasm or if I was being serious. I guess, I guess you'll know. Anyways, it was now nighttime and the final thing I had to do was take out the spawner on the bottom floor which was pretty easy because all of these step skeletons were stuck and needed my help to get out. And after deleting all of them and stealing their spawner, I finished looting the entire ship, which didn't end up having much on it that would make this much effort worth it, but at least my XP was now through the roof. For day 146, I set back out for more of the typical looting. I found about four different mob towers that I quickly stole the waystone, the gold, the top chest, and all the loot from, which at this point were becoming kind of a chore, but that didn't matter because soon I was about to stumble upon the perfect place for my new home. I continued flying over an ocean until I hit this desert that had this absolutely massive and stunning palace. I mean, this place looked like smallish beans had been inside of my world before me. And honestly, this place is so huge, I didn't know where to begin. That is until I saw this next door treehouse looking base that also looked amazing. This place is full of zombies with diamond pickaxes and skeletons that occasionally kept shooting me in the face. But more importantly, this place looked like a perfect contender to make a perfect base. So I landed on top of it and I carefully built down until I was in range to smack each of the zombies without taking crazy damage. And by the time all of the enemies that were outside were gone, it had become nighttime and I could finally check the chests. And inside of them was so much stuff including these animated items called coin dragons. From both of these chests, I got a total of four coin dragons, and I was really hoping that I could have them as like pets or something. And I also got a ton of other pretty quality loot. And now that the top layer of this place is safe, I could look around to see what was nearby. And this place truly had a million dollar view. There were these giant black mountains with lava flowing down the sides in the distance, along with this giant fossil sticking out of the earth. And to our left was that colossal palace that was probably full of things to kill and loot to borrow. This place looked gorgeous. So on the next day, day 147, I climbed down the side of my base to begin slaying all the enemies down below. And after they were all gone, I checked more of the chests, which had a fifth coin dragon and this thing called an Eldawood lava bucket, which I was really hoping could store more than one source of lava. Maybe infinite lava? Ooh woo? Yeah, I just said that. What are you can do about it? Anyways, I spent this entire day slowly making my way down each level, clearing out all of the enemies until I stumbled upon this huge rave of mobs below. 
Just to be safe, I kept my distance while taking out skeletons, one by one, until I heard a super loud explosion. Either it was the skeleton that for some reason spread snow everywhere, or a creeper got squished in the center. Either way, I didn't really care, so I continued clearing out the pile of mobs until this place was finally safe. And after deleting the rest of those crypto bros from existence, I checked my inventory for some of the armor drops and this leather cap had freaking protection eight on it. What even was this mod pack at this point? I continued checking the loot inside of the chests up top of this place and it was busted. I found an iron pickaxe and a bow with the indestructible enchantment. So I tried taking them out for a test run to see if they would lose durability. And after breaking blocks with a pickaxe, this thing was standing strong. I'm pretty sure this was an infinite pickaxe. Unfortunately though, I couldn't add Indestructible to my bow because it already had Mending. Or at least that's what I figured, I don't really know. Anyways, now that I was getting my first taste of these really crazy enchantments, I was dying to figure out how boosted these things really were. On day 148, now that my maybe permanent base was cleared out, I placed down a waystone and I flew over to the top of the Smallish Beans castle. So that way I could begin clearing out the place for some of that insane loot. And honestly, today had me speechless. I ran inside to break the first spawner I saw, which turned out to be a wither skeleton spawner. After taking down the first wither skeleton, he dropped something that I had been searching for forever now. These guys dropped wither bones, which, okay, listen, hear me out here. I know it's pretty obvious, but Ice and Fire is a mod that has changed a lot since Earlcraft, so I kind of forgot about this old glitch where they never showed Wither Skeletons as part of the drop table for Wither Bones. And I know you'd think, oh, Wither Bones? Where would they drop from, right? Definitely not a Wither Skeleton, right? But listen, hear me out here. Fire and Ice changes a lot, so you never know. But anyways, I could now use these bones to begin making dragon bone tools and weapons. But first, I was going to save that for another day because this place is insane. I continued running through and taking out the skeletons and their spawners as quickly as I could so as few of them would spawn as possible. And these guys were really beefy. They took so many swipes before they went down, but after wiping all of them out in this area, the chests ended up having some pretty cracked loot. The two chests on the next floor up had the typical diamond enchanted pieces of armor and other good loot, and the chest at the very top had almost a stack of diamonds inside. There were 42 diamonds inside of this one chest alone, and this structure was insanely huge. The amount of loot in this place, in comparison this tiny little room, was a speck of dust in the grand scheme of loot. It's fair to say that I was in my element here, and I mean this literally. I moved on to the next maze-like room on the roof, and there were like eight spawners in there that I battled my way through and collected, and this place just kept frying my mind. These guys were dropping wither skulls, I was getting enough spawners to make the most insane farms known to man, and at the very center was this super OP treasure room that was full of blocks of gold, there was diamond, emerald, along with a chest with two shiny new netherite swords. And as if I needed more of them, there were 48 more diamonds. This world was becoming more and more like Arlcraft by the second, which I know I keep saying, I'm sorry. By the time I had finished clearing out this second room, it was now the end of day 152. For the next three days straight, days 153 through 155, I went back to the palace to continue my OP loot binging spree. I started off back at the top floor where I control alt deleted all of the regular and wither skeletons as I went around breaking all of the spawners and lighting up the area. I ran up the second tower area so fast the spawners couldn't even keep up with me before they met their demise. And of course, the three chests up here at the top, so many more diamond, iron, gold, and rare items inside, but overall, nothing too much crazier than what I've already found. After finishing the top floor, I made my way down the staircase to this middle area full of zombies. I sat on the staircase, sniping some of the more powerful guys before I ran in to clean up the rest of the stragglers and any spawners. And this area was kind of a scam because there were only two chests and they had some kind of mediocre loot overall. But the overall design of each area of this place was amazing. It was so much fun fighting my way through here. 
After finishing up all the rooms of zombies, I headed down the orange stared area, and I somehow ended up inside this graveyard at the center of a more massive set of dark rooms. And at first, I was handling things pretty well, until I was knocked off of my tree and ganged up on by this lightning fast cave spider and a ghost witch, which is a weird combo, come on now. So in desperation, I grabbed my fireworks and I sonic speed flew out of there with no regrets whatsoever, except maybe hitting the wall once or twice. We don't talk about that, just like Bruno. But anyways, to finish up the day, I headed back to my temporary base for a moment to actually catch my breath. And for the next four days, days 156 through 160, I spent more time grinding all of the remaining parts of this dungeon palace into the dust. I first flew down to the second open area on the side, and I was ambushed by more of those gross Lightning McQueen cave spiders. But after fending them off from the distance, I ran in and destroyed their spawner, and I lit up the entire area. After this, I spent the next couple of days clearing out as many of the spawners in dark areas as I could, until my pickaxe was about to break. So I left the area to go back to my now super inefficient XP farm, where I sat there grinding XP with my pickaxe and my offhand until it was about at 20% durability. Because for some reason in this mod pack, it took decades to repair tools like pickaxes. But anyways, now that I've gotten most of the best loot from the Desert Palace dungeon, I'm pretty sure I was done with it for now because I needed upgrades. I needed to make a new XP slash emerald farm and I needed to begin trading with more villagers. I also needed to begin making my bone tools and weapons. And finally, I needed to make a real base with at least some proper storage. So it's kind of safe to say I had more important things to do than to sit there and finish the rest of that dungeon to completion. But maybe in the future we'll come back when we're a little stronger and we'll clear out anything that's left. So on day 161, I teleported back to my original base and I crafted two new dragon bone swords that I began enchanting until I realized that I still needed one more thing before I could make the swords that I wanted. I was going to need to kill a dragon to collect its breath and to be honest, I didn't know if I was ready for that yet, but today was the day that we were going to find out. That dragon from like 20 days ago that was most likely munching my villagers as we speak in Paintopia is going down. So I organized my inventory to the best that I could to counter the dragon. I have a literal army of arrows, two god apples, half a stack of golden apples, a third totem of undying in my hotbar just in case, I brought ender pearls, and a panic waypoint just in case I have to leave, and fireworks. After this, I added a waypoint to my map by the original village because I, I can't really teleport there. The dragon might just eat me. Yeah, you get, you get the point. So now that my waypoint was on the map, I flew the short journey here until I saw him chilling near my original house, 1v2ing an iron golem and a guard. And that is when I engaged him in terrifying combat. And uh, apparently I was scared for nothing because I was insanely overprepared for this fight and the guy just kind of fell over and died. And just like that, I had slain my first dragon in better Minecraft. So I grabbed the glass bottles that I brought in preparation and I took three bottles of fire dragon goo to begin making fire swords. And yes, I know it's not what it's called, but I just think it's so much more funny to call it that. Let's be honest here. But anyways, now that I had what I needed to make the fire sword, all I needed was some lightning dragon goo to make that beautiful purple lightning sword. But for now, the threat of this village is gone, and I went around checking on my villagers to see if any of them were safe, and literally the only thing the dragon chose to burn was my original house. I mean, I don't really care, but like, why? Why didn't he eat any of the villagers? But anyways, most important thing is that my firework villager was still alive and strong. Because honestly, this guy was the most important. The rest of them could get eaten for all I care. Sorry, guys. So after this, I went back to my base and I crafted my first flame sword of this world. And this boy does extra damage towards ice dragons. But first, I was going to need real enchantments to make it into the god sword that it was so very much so meant to be. But honestly, 
Today, I had gotten my first taste of dragon blood, and I wanted more. Plus, my inventory was still perfectly prepped and ready to go to take on more dragons. So it's safe to say, tomorrow, we're going hunting. So on day 162, I teleported back to the possibly new base where I had marked a possible nearby dragon's nest, and once flying over it, the target had been spotted. And this one happened to be a copper dragon. So because I was already and set to go, I began taking my shots, and this guy had way more health than the last dragon. Either that first dragon was just super weak, or that iron golem was a literal Mr. Beast. But either way, more health or not, this dragon was still going down. I stood strong and continued shooting him with arrows until he shot me in the face with a huge stream of lightning, which meant only one thing. Out of all the dragons this guy could have been, I had found the exact lightning dragon that I needed. So I kept hitting this boy in the face with perfect accuracy, because I don't miss, until he finally went down. I grabbed more glass bottles and I collected three bottles of that purple dragon goo, while unfortunately wasting all of my scale loot slots. But hey, that was worth it because that's two dragons down and now I had access to lightning weapons. But I was still not done here, as Billy Mays says, but wait, there's more. I continued searching nearby for more dragons until I stumbled across this village with the best blocks ever. There was this dance floor with two DJs in RGB gaming blocks. So of course, like the gamer Chad that I am, I stole all of them and it turns out that they're super easy to craft more of, so you will definitely see those in a future video. After borrowing my new RGB gaming blocks, I continued on until I found a nearby desert temple, which is the perfect spot to find more spirit orbs. So I flew over to it and before going inside, I checked my map for more dragon's nest and I found another one a couple hundred blocks in the distance. So as the sun was starting to go down, I entered the temple and I dug down to the loot room where I found an additional three spirit orbs, which now put me at the perfect amount to buy another heart container. And after I finished looting this dump, I climbed my way back up to place a new waystone that I then used to teleport back home, where I tested out placing one of the new statues to buy health, and I gave myself a third additional heart. After this, I crafted myself the coveted and gorgeous lightning sword that I had the perfect name for. And I was super excited. This sword looks so cool. For the next day, day 163, I teleported back to that waystone, ready to make that dragon's day significantly worse. I flew in close so I could begin taking shots at him, and I couldn't really find the dragon until he Five Nights at Freddy jump scared me from behind. And now, I was angry. I sat here taking shot after shot at this boy while backing off as he got closer and closer until this big dumb idiot got himself stuck. You could say Step Dragon was stuck. That's not the first time I'm going to make this joke in this series. But that's okay because I stole all of his scales and bones without taking a single heart of damage. Things were going GG easy. So I was going to continue on my newfound quest to hunt down more dragons until I got distracted by this platypus. Minecraft has platypi. I was now in love. I needed this as a pet that I could name Perry the platypus. So I desperately sifted through my shulkers to find wood for a crafting bench as fast as I humanly could so I could make a bucket and use it to try and catch him. And during this process, I may have accidentally hit him, and I was so sorry for that. But after grabbing a water source, I placed it down on him, and I now had a bucket of platypus. We had gotten our first pet. Now I just needed a bucket of lizard and my life would be complete. Anyways, to end off this already amazing day, I had found another one of those structures that I was thinking about calling home nearby that I had to quickly loot the two top chests from. So I sat here struggling not to get hit while stealing as much of the good stuff as I could, and by the time this day was over, I was back at home where I tested out summoning the coin dragons. And they are so adorable. Plus, they kind of just hang out wherever you place them. This mod pack was too much. On day 164, since my loot storage problems were becoming worse and worse, I decided to teleport back to my possible new future base. However, I wasn't really content with this area anymore because I am way too picky. So I continued flying until I found this really sus looking ladder that brought me down to what I thought was going to be my doom. However, instead, it ended up being a group of villagers and golems. This place was exactly what I needed because I was going to need more villagers to make my brand new enchanted god dragon swords. So after exploring around this area, I placed down a waystone so I could come back in the future before setting back out. 
and even though I didn't find the perfect place to live today, it was still crazy productive. I kept flying until I hit a new desert with a new sand village that had more of those RGB gaming blocks, which of course I borrowed, followed by me finding this insane looting giant monster skeleton with a pile of beautiful gold blocks inside of its mouth of all places. So while I was flying with my elytra, I just kind of landed in its mouth. That's a sentence. I broke the spawner and I killed the golden husk and I stole all of these gold stonks before continuing on to finding this masterpiece of a coliseum with a spawner in the center that spawned this giant sky demon with a diamond armor skeleton riding it. I shot this guy in the face for a solid 10 or so times, banishing him back to the shadow realm where he very likely belonged before also sending his bony friend to the same fate. And this dude dropped me this god tier uncraftable potion. This thing gives you bad omen 5 for raids, 30 minutes of strength, plus 1 minute and a half health boost and saturation. Plus I now had the spawner that could hopefully summon more of these things so I could farm more potions. But anyways it was now nighttime, so I placed my bed out to sleep underneath the stars in the center of this gorgeous coliseum. After conquering that coliseum I spent the next 4 days straight days 165 through 168 continuing my journey for a new place to live and boy were these 4 days action packed. On the first day I found another one of those fossils with more loot inside of its mouth except this time there was a small pool of water with some emerald blocks inside along with some ores that were ripe for the taking. Except for some weird reason, this red dragon decided that I was his worst mortal enemy, or he just thought that I was a snack, which honestly is pretty true, but either way, this man was not getting away with his crimes against me. So while he was trying to cook me to a crisp, I began taking pop shots at his face until he finally went down in the very fire that he had spread like a plague. And since I had to waste so many arrows on him, I thought it was only fair that I took his skin. All 10 scales of it. And now that he was no longer a threat, I of course went back for those gorgeous emerald blocks that had my name on them. And if you think this day was a lot, well, I mean, things things got more crazy. I later found myself in another desert because for whatever cursed reason, my world was half full of them. And this place was full of things to do. I first stumbled upon another one of those underground villager bases, except this place was emptier than Titanfall's servers, which didn't really make much sense to me until this desert worm began spawn camping me at the top of the ladder. Most likely this guy was to blame for the now lack of villagers, but that didn't matter to me because nearby was another desert temple that would hopefully have more of those soul orbs that I could use to get more health, or at least some more god apples and apparently another dragon's lair nearby because while I was just kind of casually hanging out sifting through my inventory for a way to catch these adorable lizards that were everywhere, this whole place was set ablaze around me and this dragon caught me and started chomping my head. I was terrified that things were going to end here. So I ate one of my god apples in desperation just in case and after breaking out I began exacting my revenge for those poor defenseless lizards that this guy had attacked. I kept shooting this dragon as much as I could, slowly turning him into a pincushion for my arrows, until I ran out. And that's when things were getting super dicey. Because not only was I down to my last 10 fireworks so I couldn't escape the dragon, but I also didn't have my blue shulker box that was full of all of my waystones, which were my only real way out of the situation. So I kept flying around the area with the remaining fireworks that I did have until I finally got close enough to my shulkers and one of them was entirely gone. That jerk dragon destroyed the entire box full of loot and he took my lizards. I was going to get my revenge. But first I grabbed the shulker full of waystones, I grabbed one out, placed it down and I quickly dipped out of there before I became that dragon's food. Honestly, I really don't know what was with dragons trying to eat me these last couple of days. It's not like I took any of their family away or anything. So on the next day, day 169, after getting back home, I cleaned out my inventory and grabbed myself more arrows so I could delete that dragon from existence. And that I did because after teleporting back and shooting him with only four more shots, he fell to the ground right before eating this nearby farmer. So I robbed his body of its skin and bones and I got a clean 19 more emerald dragon scales. And now that the desert was a relatively more safe place, I headed back over to the desert temple that I was trying to loot before I was so rudely interrupted, and I broke my way down so I could steal myself a bunch more loot. And inside of these chests wasn't much, but I did get this crazy Bane of Villagers 8 enchanted book and another soul orb for my collection. 
And of course, I stole all of the TNT from below because... I don't know, I like stuff. Anyways, by the time I left the temple, I was still so distracted by the lizards, so I went online to do some quick research on the mod until I had been enlightened. It turns out the only thing that I needed to catch these bad boys was this super easy to craft net. So I went back home for the night to clean out my inventory and build some nets. And it turns out while looting the temple, I had found this crazy spellstone that gives me all of these insane projectile related buffs at the cost of only being a little more vulnerable to wither damage and void damage. Nice. For day 170, the very first thing I did, because priorities, of course, was build myself some nets to go catch lizards. That's right, I'm supposed to be making armor, but instead I'm catching lizards. Bite me. Upon going back to the desert, I was confused because none of the lizards were being caught by the nets, and I accidentally smacked one and I really felt bad about it. So I went back to my base to kind of figure out what was going on, and I think I discovered the issue. Lizards are parts of the creatures and beasts mod, and you can feed them by giving them apple slices, which can be crafted from regular apples. So I scoured all of my house chests for the single remaining apple that I had, because I used the rest for golden apples, and I used it to make apple slices. And after that, I went back to the desert to try feeding the lizard apple slices, and boom! The net finally works, and I now have lizards. So I went around looking for more to feed my remaining two apple slices to before catching, and after running out, I tried right-clicking another lizard just in case it worked, and for some reason it did. The net just kind of worked now, which meant only one thing. Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. I spent the entire rest of today running around catching as many lizard friends as I could until I was very rudely interrupted by the third emerald dragon. The joke was on this guy because my bow had punch too, which pretty much kept him far away from me until he finally went down. And this dude must have been thick with three C's because he dropped a whopping 25, count him, 25 emerald scales, along with more bones and his skull. And at this point, it was safe to say I was becoming a dragon slaying god. However, on the next day, day 171, I was about to regret calling myself a god of anything. I went back to the desert area and searched for more lizards, and while I was there, I noticed this stone brick style spiral staircase that normally I wouldn't go down because it's super sketch. However, there were tons of villagers nearby, and on my map, it showed a ton of villagers, and it was all lit up. So I thought it might be another one of those underground villager bases. And upon getting down here, it was one of the big ones. There were villagers everywhere. However, once I did make my way down the stairs, I got an achievement for finding something called the Foundry. At the time, I thought it was referring to this village, but boy, boy was I wrong. I began exploring all of the village halls looking for any nearby loot, but my minimap was full of other mobs. And that's when I found this massive, and I mean like stupendously giant, dark cathedral looking structure that had fountains of lava in the center of each corridor. And there were spawners. Inside of this place, there were spawners that spawned in these absolutely cracked piglin brutes in netherite armor. And these guys had very scary buffs. At first everything was fine because I kept my distance while sniping them. I ran in to break the first spawner and a lot of the loot was pretty mediocre. But then everything went wrong. I approached the second spawner so I could break it and a couple of brutes spawned in which, which normally wouldn't be a huge deal because of my bow but that's when I heard the cursed hiss of a creeper about to explode behind me. And this guy threw me directly into the stream of lava while I was being absolutely beaten and bruised by these piglins. So after escaping the lava, I ran like my life depended on it because, I mean, it probably did. And these dudes must have been from the Sonic Metaverse because they kept up with me the entire time giving me no break. I tried placing blocks to stop them from entering the village halls, but they were way too quick and to make it even worse, I accidentally placed down this block of quicksand that I had found and I ended up trapping myself in it with these guys who started doing insane damage to me. They had a strong, these piglins each had a strong three buff and crazy strong pickaxes. So I did what must have been done. I ate another god apple and I fought for my life until both of them were down. This was terrifying. So as the night was about to end, I placed down a waystone and I went back home so I could properly prepare myself for that literal hell. Even though I was still supposed to be out looking for a place to live. I know, I'm very distracted. So on day 172, the very first thing I did was begin placing out any and all shulker boxes that I had that had spawners inside because my armor was super dinged up from fighting the forge and I was going to need to grind XP back 
at my XP farm. However, this time it was going to be far more efficient. I grabbed all of my Vindicator spawners that I had for emeralds and Wither Skeleton spawners for extra Wither Bones and the chance at getting more Wither Skulls. I placed these spawners in two separate columns down the center of the tower with two blocks in between so no mobs would get stuck and ruin the mob cap. And now this tower was going to be an absolute beast. It took no time at all for other mobs to spawn in and these mobs dropped so much XP and way better loot. After finishing swapping out the spawners, I spent the rest of the day grinding out mad amounts of mobs and this was going insanely well. After only the first five minutes of grinding, I already had gotten four more stacks of emeralds plus two wither skulls. And speaking of wither skulls, I still had several nether stars back home that I could use to make beacons and a beacon was exactly what I needed to really make this place maximum efficiency. Especially since, you know, fixing pickaxes takes an actual year in this mod pack, which is way longer than vanilla for no reason. So anyways, I went back to my base to gather enough supplies for the beacons, except I was missing obsidian. And unfortunately, the quickest way to get more of it was the foundry dungeon. So I teleported back and I stole nine obsidian before leaving as fast as I could. I wanted nothing to do with this place right now. After getting home, I crafted myself three shiny new beacons. I then grabbed a ton of gold blocks and I struggled to construct a new max level beacon by my XP farm during this awful snowstorm. However, I now had strength too and I was ready to fully repair my pickaxe by grinding myself some more XP. So for the next three days, days 173 through 175, I spent my time waiting up top of the XP farm tower for tons of mobs to spawn and grinding my way through them for mad insane stonks. And I know I say it every time, but this farm was busted. Throughout these three days, I probably killed thousands of mobs, and not only did I repair all of the tools and armor, including the pickaxe, insanely fast, but I also ended up with 75 total levels, after passing that quality 69 of course. And during these three days, I also learned the actual dangers of this farm. Because there was a chance that wither spawners can spawn mutant wither skeletons. And at first it wasn't a huge deal, I kind of saw it on the map and you know, whatever. The first one ended up suffocating in the wall and I took all of his bones in skull for free. However, the next one was not that easy. I waited for about 10 minutes straight while mobs were spawning and there were about 5 of those monsters in there. 5. And at first they couldn't really touch me until I cleared out a lot of the mobs and they were the last ones left. Then they started doing some insane damage by wall banging me. It was almost like these guys had wall hacks and I was playing on Nuketown because they almost made me pop a totem multiple times. So unfortunately, I had to eat yet another god apple. I just can't have nice things in this world. Like honestly, I just don't know what it is with these recent days. Things were getting scary. But anyways, by the time I was done grinding all of these mobs, I ended up with this insane chest full of loot. I crafted all of the emeralds into blocks and I ended up with a solid two stacks plus an additional 11 which may not be faster than stick trading, but it's still pretty pog. On top of that, I also ended up with a ton of coal, 10 wither skulls, and a lot of stacks of wither bones and cracked wither bones. Overall, my farm was now very, very overpowered. For the next two days, days 176 through 177, now that all of my tools and gear were mended, I headed back home where I was going to prepare to take on the foundry. But first, I had been seeing how I wanted to find a new place to live and make a storage network for ages, and at this point, I was going mad. I had way too much loot laying everywhere, and I could barely find anything that I needed ever. So for these days, I struggled to pull together whatever resources I needed to craft myself the surprisingly easy items that I would need to not only make the perfect storage system, but also get portable storage access. That's right, you heard me right. After this network was built, I was going to have access to everything that I owned while I was out on the go. So I spent the next two days crafting the storage inventory, storage network route, and storage request tables that I was going to need for it. And now there was only one thing left that I needed, and it was the crafting remote. This bad boy would allow me to access all of my inventory and craft from anywhere in the world. However, I was missing one of the key items that I needed to make it, sea lanterns. But luckily, I knew about an oceanographer villager that just so happened to trade them. 
So I crafted the block that he would need and I traveled back to my first village where I traded with this bad boy for a sweet stack of easy lanterns. And after returning home, I crafted the new remote along with a whole bunch of link cables that would be needed to connect all of the chests that I hooked up to them to make my brand new storage network. However, now I needed a house to place it in. And you know what? This base has been my home for the last 175 days. So why not continue that trend? So on day 178, now that I had everything I could need for the storage system, I began clearing some space near the corner of my base so I could begin placing everything out. I broke down all of the dark oak wood planks that were imprisoning this villager in Iron Golem for what feels like millennia, and I cleaned up any of the other blocks that would make this whole area a lot more open so I could place out this wall of regular chests all the way up to the ceiling in the corner of the house. After that, I hooked up the link cables to each and every chest, and I placed out the three storage blocks that I would need to make up the network. After this, I right-clicked it with the remote, and mission maximum looting plus ultra was now in full swing, because I had access to my inventory from anywhere. Honestly, why didn't I do this way sooner? I no longer even needed shulker boxes, technically. Anyways, now that the network was in full swing, I went around doing the most satisfying thing ever, which was breaking all of my chests and rapidly yeeting everything into my storage from off the ground. I did this for every single chest, including finally emptying out all of my shulkers. And now I could truly live my life just like Larry. This was one of the best and easiest mods I have ever used, especially since I didn't have to generate power. I still get flashbacks to that Arlcraft video, I swear. For day 179, now that I had finally fixed my storage problems, I was ready to go back and take on the Foundry. So I used my Waystone to teleport there, and I slowly began clearing the spawners out one at a time to be safe about it. This place was massive. The hallways just kept going on, and the ambient sounds were super eerie. I continued going further into the place. I spotted this giant orb of what seemed to be charred blocks directly in the center. And that's when I saw the random redstone, emerald, and other ores in between all of those very charred blocks. Which means only one thing. This was a level 5 dragon's den. Directly in the center of the place. Things were going to get interesting. So I put some ender pearls and a waystone into my hotbar just in case. And I dug in to see this gigantic beast sleeping. And as Danny DeVito would say, I just started blasting. I began shooting this thing with my bow and honestly, the dragon was kind of dumb. It began breaking through floors until it got stuck by the lava where I eventually took it down with arrows. I'm kind of glad it hit that lava because this thing would have probably gone all the way to the surface. And if that happened, my life would have been significantly harder. But I had easily defeated my first level five dragon. And as it would turn out, the dragon wasn't really the problem here because under the nest was this huge room with more spawners and magma cubes the size of the sun. But things were okay because I wasn't going down there, right? Well, not quite. I built my way up to the dragon's corpse to loot it, except there was a nearby spawner that had already spawned more of those piglin brutes and something was off, very off. I couldn't snipe them, so as they got closer, I tried to break the blocks under the terracotta, except I also couldn't break them. So I tried to build up and smack them from above, and I still couldn't damage them. This part of the dungeon didn't seem right. Something was off. If I wanted to collect the dragon's drops, which hopefully contained an egg for a dragon, I was going to have to become clever to do this. Or so I had thought, because after reloading my world, just in case I was lagging or something, everything started going how it was supposed to. The enemies could be damaged and the blocks could once again be broken. Apparently these dragons are just as laggy in 1.16 Minecraft as they were in 1.12. But anyways, since I could now damage them, I sniped out all of the brutes that were camping me before doing this very risky pro gamer move where I flew over to the spawner of my elytra to quickly break it. And these guys were really not a big fan of that because after I did manage to break it, they chased me down several times and I barely had time to react. I ended up just building up inside of the dragon's nest and sniping each and every one of them in the face until I was finally safe to collect my winnings. And upon looting the dragon, there was sadly no dragon egg, only the massive pile of 48 scales and bones. And after all that ridiculousness, honestly, I was thinking about taking a break from this place 
So I ran out of that dump as fast as Minecraft humanly possible. The next time I go back here, I will be way more prepared with a much better weapon and hopefully better armor. But anyways, overall I was down here until the end of day 182. So on the next day, day 183, after getting back home, it was time to start renovating my base for the new villager army that I was going to need to make my new swords into beasts. So to start this process, I cleared out all of the random plants and other blocks downstairs, and I spent most of this day just removing the dirt and stone floor, replacing it with some much nicer and more classy spruce wood. I also increased the size of each doorway to give myself more space to place different villagers along the edges. And if you're wondering why I said place the villagers instead of boat them, then boy did I have a surprise for you. After doing a little bit more research on how to move mobs in this mod pack, I came across an item called the Quantum Catcher, which I could use to pick up villagers from literally anywhere and bring them to my base. However, in order to make it, I was going to need two things. The first was spawner scraps, which I could easily get since I've been silk touching every spawner I've been finding for the last 100 days. And the next thing was a block of arcane crystals, which I could find by mining arcane down below. So that was exactly what I was going to do. I crafted myself several stacks of ladders and I dug down a two block area straight down as far as I could until I got to what I thought would be bedrock. But instead it was just pitch black, almost like the void. And that's when I learned just how unforgiving this world really is. That's right, it was just void. There were just holes in the bedrock in this mod pack. That's terrifying. But with that crisis averted, I began strip mining for ores and yeah, Bedrock floor just has random openings in it everywhere, a void. So instead of living life dangerously on the edge, I built up a couple more layers before continuing my excursion. And throughout the night, I got basically nothing. Just some more coal and much needed lapis, but no arcane crystals. So I thought I would move on to plan B, which was to instead go caving the next day. So for day 184, I made the genius big brain gamer idea to teleport back to the foundry so I could hopefully find a nearby open cave system. And boy did I. It turned out this area was full of so many different structures that it was an absolute dumpster fire. I ended up running into one of those multi-layered dungeons that are also in Arlcraft, however just much more difficult. And this place was covered wall to ceiling with vines everywhere. And to make this mess even worse, a ravine divided it right down the middle. But this wasn't just any ravine because down at the bottom were the exact ores that I had come here for. Those round glowing white ores dropped the arcane crystals that I was in need of. So I slowly made my way down there after taking out some more cave spawners and wither skeletons. And I collected the first few of these ores that I was going to need. However, I was far from done here if I was going to make multiple of the catchers for maximum efficiency. So I spent the next few days pushing further through this dungeon area and everything was such a mess. I ended up running into the structure made of platinum blocks that had these armored boys nearby. And I found some gorgeous RGB gaming ores that dropped X petrified orbs. Whatever those were for. I was down here until the end of day 85 when I found myself at a dead end that led me back into the very dangerous looking part of the foundry dungeon that I wasn't quite a huge fan of. So I tried to retrace my steps but I wasn't having much luck until I ended up finding this mine shaft that was also intertwined with the rest of this mess. And while down here I struck a massive 14 vein of diamond in the process while trying to find my way back up. After getting those diamonds, I kept exploring until I conveniently ran into one of the hallways for that underground village, and my waystone was right nearby, so I could finally leave that awful place. On day 186, after getting home, I had the epiphany of a literal lifetime. No, a lifetime made of lifetimes. I grabbed my fortune 3 pickaxe from my storage so I could begin breaking spawners for scrap along with the ores that I had collected. And after breaking the first spawner, my mind literally exploded because spawners dropped soul orbs along with the spawner scraps and they drop enough for one extra heart each. I was beyond ecstatic. But before I continued exploiting that to the max, I had to break my 14 diamond ores and the abysmal amount of arcane crystals that I had gotten. After breaking the diamonds, they dropped me a sweet 36 and after cleaning up the arcane ores, they gave me eight which just so happened to be one shy of what I needed to make a mere single quantum catcher. But for now, that could wait, because I had a date with these spawners. 
I began mass breaking almost every spawner in my storage system for stacks upon stacks of soul orbs. And I learned something insane. The maximum amount of hearts you get from this statue was not two rows. It was three. And my hearts were now a golden yellow. I was flipping the hell out about this. So now that my health was now maxed out to the absolute best degree possible, I began upgrading the stamina circle, which I still have zero clue what it does, but but I got this super cool achievement for becoming the hero of Hyrule, which means I totally guessed it, this was definitely a Zelda mod. Plus, I still had more than a stack and a half of leftover orbs that I probably no longer needed and didn't need to break the spawners for, but besides not having enough arcane crystals, today was still an amazing day. For day 187, I started out by throwing my shield into the enchantment setup for some extra enchants to make me even beefier with these three rows of hearts that I now had. To make me even beefier with these three rows of health, and now that I was all set, I fast traveled back to the desert village where I was almost consumed by that green dragon to try and find another cave with more of those ores inside. And today was absolutely absurd. I went back over to that nearby underground village that had fallen victim to the sandworms, and while down here, I stumbled upon this nice little mini ravine with tons of ores inside. However, I wasn't quite far enough down yet, so there weren't many arcane ores. However, this is when things turned crazy. While finishing up exploring the ravine, I found this massive drop below that went straight into lava, and I had zero clue what was going on. So I whipped out a crafting bench since for some reason after fighting mobs I can't open the storage remote and I made a brand new bucket that I used to grab some water so I could casually float my way down to check everything out. And I found myself in awe. This cave was like journey to the center of the earth and I could see tons of those white arcane ores glowing alongside the walls. This place was perfect until this level five fire dragon rendered in the distance down below. There was a dragon's nest directly in the center of this cave and the dragon had somehow escaped. So now I had to somehow safely fight this dragon after managing to place enough water so I didn't lose its drops after the fight. So I placed down a new waystone back up in the ravine and I went back home where I brewed myself nine eight minute fire res potions just in case I fell in the lava and I spent the rest of the night cleaning out my inventory for all of that future loot that I was about to get. On the next day, day 188, I traveled back to the ravine and I began placing water sources up top so I had more safe area below before I slipped an elytra straight into the lava directly in front of the dragon like an absolute smooth brain. I quickly struggled to drink a fire res potion and switched to my fireworks and my hotbar before flying out of the lava and over to a more safe side of the cave. And luckily the dragon didn't follow me, which was probably because he was stuck in the lava. Must suck to suck, huh, Step Dragon? Anyways, while I was over here near another source of water, since when landing in the lava I tried to place mine, which I honestly have no words for because that makes zero sense, I swam up to collect it, and while up here I scored some more of that sweet arcane crystal that I had been looking for. After mining those little bit of crystals, a loot goblin spawned in, and normally I wouldn't care too much, but he had this busted trade to get a fortune 5 pickaxe. And that's when I went to make up for that super smooth brain moment earlier with this giga 5 head one. I placed out my ores and broke them with my fortune pickaxe and I placed down another waystone so I could go back to my base, make a smithing table, and create my very first quantum catcher. And now that I had it, I went back and I picked up this little dude so I could bring him back to my house to totally not exploit him for trades in the future. And now that I was in safe distance from the dragon, and I had a new goblin friend, I began exploring this cave system more while gathering copious amounts of those sweet sweet arcanium ores. That is, until I ran into a boss bar for something called the Ferris Rotnot, which turned out to be this huge stone knight with a sword in his back that was just kind of chilling in the lava. So I did what a smart pro gamer would do around a bear, and I poked it. I placed water down to free him of his lava prison. And just like the other two Mousy's mob bosses, this guy was now going down, and unlike the normal boss fights that are super hectic and fun, this one was, um, basic to say the least. His movement was so slow that he could never catch up to me, and his attacks only happened when I was in close proximity for like 5 seconds. And they were more predictable than the average isekai anime. No shade though, I do love isekais. 
But yeah, this fight took so much longer than it should have because he was only vulnerable to damage after he used his axe slam attack and got stuck and I would smack him in the back. But after about, I kid you not, five hits, his cheeks were mine and so was his trashy axe and helmet that both apparently never break. I guess this guy never got the mending memo. But anyways, now that he was down and all of the safe side of this cave were looted for the Arcanium, I was now ready to go back and take on Le Dragion. Plus, it was now the end of day 190. On day 191, after emptying my inventory, I was finally ready to take on that stuck step dragon. I began placing water sources down to build my way over to him, and this was probably the most intense dragon fight for the entire video. Nah, I'm just kidding. This guy just kind of sat here letting my punch bow push him across the lava until he died. And now that his story was at its end, it was time for me to steal all of their loot. I placed enough water around just in case so none of the drops got burned. And this dragon was thick with 10 C's. It dropped a stack in 25 scales. Plus finally I had gotten a dragon egg. I could get a dragon and begin making dragon steel. However, that's probably going to happen in 300 days because for now I had plans of a final enemy to kill by day 100. But if you do want to see 300 days, don't forget to leave a like. If we get to 30k likes, we'll definitely do it. But before we get to that, I have to finish a couple more things on my list, like finishing making more quantum catchers, to gather the villagers, and to make my dragon god swords insanely OP. However, while I was still here, I wanted to check out the dragon's den because something kind of seemed off. The den was too long, almost like there were two dragons spawned next to each other. So I flew up inside and I guess this place was just warped for no reason because all that was left in here were subpar chests and this super fast chad zombie that I wanted nothing to do with. After finishing up the dragon's den, plural, because I'm still pretty sure there were two of them, I spent all of day 192 mining out the rest of the arcane ores around the area until I stumbled upon this underground mining bridge that was floating above the lava. And this place was super cool looking. There were spawners everywhere that spawned different beefy and fast skeletons. And the barrels were full of some pretty cracked loot along with more diamond enchanted armors. However, I didn't want to spend much time down here so I quickly cleared out this place in full as fast as I could so I could move on with my Minecraft life. And I made sure to take any of the remaining arcane ores nearby while also stealing all of the powered rails because hoarder gang unite. Can I get some hoarder gangs in the comments? Anyways, after finishing up the entire cave with way more arcane ore than I ever expected, I flew down to the waterfall and I swam up and teleported home for the night. On day 193, I placed out all of my arcane ores with my offhand while breaking them with my fortune 3 pick until I had enough crystals to make an insane 19 more quantum catchers. With this many, I could now borrow an entire village at a time. Literally. So after crafting the 19 more, I teleported back to the forge dungeon underground and I ran around stealing, I mean rescuing every villager from this literal hell. And after collecting the eight that I did manage to find, I ran into another part of the foundry with a spawner that was close enough to me to start pumping out those very dangerous enemies. So I got a bit creative with my iron golem torture today. I used one of the catchers to pick up this iron golem and I struggled to drop him down to his doom. And just to see how they would do, um, yeah, they tore him apart like they were World War Z zombies. So, I was not going down there. Also, why does this keep happening to my Iron Golems in my game? The world will never know. So, after that newest addition to the top 10 saddest anime deaths, I was now out of this place because I had all of the villagers that I was going to begin trading with for my god swords. So the very first thing I did on day 194 was, was evict all of my villagers inside of this box from the first 100 days and I broke it down so this place could finally be less of a cluster. It was now the nicest in here that it has been in forever. We were finally making progress. And speaking of progress, I began turning this whole wall into a section of villager boxes now that I had the space. I started to glass in the sides of my base and I sealed each box with a job block and this is when I realized my mistake. All of the villagers that I picked up started refusing to change jobs because the game had no clue what to do with them. So these villagers ended up being useless. 
So I had this quick idea to try dumping them into the nether to see if they would revert into regular villagers like in vanilla. Because if you put villagers in the nether, they forget their job blocks and they become normal. So I placed down this guy in the nether and he did not change. So I just kind of left the dude here. I guess this place was now the shadow realm because he was stuck here for eternity. After this, I spent the rest of the day struggling to mess with my villagers which I didn't know who was who until I placed them and yeah, pretty uneventful day because of the screw up. But that was okay because for the next two days, days 195 through 197, I was on a crazy villager reroll roll. Get it? I'm not sorry. I teleported to the sand village by Paintopia and I stole as many villagers as I could fit in my inventory that I took back to my base to begin the mass rerolls. Let me just say, better Minecraft plus enchantments are almost as good as RL craft, if not better. Plus so many of the default ones like unbreaking and sharpness now have a chance to go over their max levels. During my rerolling, I found some insane things. I found punch four before finding punch five, which would definitely go on a new dragon bow. I found freaking protection six. I found this enchantment called slayer that was level freaking 10 and worked similarly to sharpness or one of the specific enchants like smite, except for all monsters. I also got capturing six, which gives you a chance to drop a spawn egg of whatever mob you kill, which is kind of pointless in this mod pack, but still pretty cool. And I found scavenger, which increases the amount of times you reroll a loot table after killing a mob, which means it kind of works like shiny hunting in Pokemon combined with looting, which is insane. I continued this process of stealing new villagers, expanding their living areas, and rerolling them until I had enough enchantments to make my weapons into absolute beasts. Plus, while searching through the Enigmatic book, I learned that I could also make recall potions similarly to Oral Craft, which would make escaping insane situations way easier. So now that I had all of my enchantments together, I spent the next two days, days 198 through 199, desperately grinding XP as fast as I possibly could to put them together, and these boys were Dubai levels of expensive. These enchantments were so powerful that adding them together was costing me like 35 plus levels a piece. I ended up combining my last couple of enchantments together into a second book, and now I was going to need 59 levels to combine them. So I did what I had to do, and I sacrificed my current sword simp slayer. I gave it this enchantment that I found, called Knowledge of the Ages 4. And this enchantment would remove all mob drops from kills in exchange for hopefully some busted levels of XP. Because I was now sacrificing tons of emeralds and wither skulls just to get this sword finished and ready for my big surprise fight on day 200. And this decision was literally one of the best I have ever made in Minecraft. Because this sword was printing levels by the second. After about 10 meager swings, I had already gotten enough XP to combine both books, and boy am I glad the XP was easier to come by now, because this sword was going to cost 133 levels to fully enchant. But this wasn't a problem at all, because after only a few minutes, I found myself passing 100 levels, and then I passed 133, the exact amount that I needed for my new god sword. And I named it Kusanagi no Sarigi, which I really hope I pronounced well, after a certain ability from a pretty mainstream anime. Let me know in the comments if you know what it's from. Anyways, now that I had my sword, it was time to take it out for a swing. And um, when it says it strikes lightning, they are literal. Every time I attack with this thing, it rains down lightning that causes fires. Why would they do this to me? So I left the XP farm to go somewhere where I could actually afford to damage, which just so happened to be that Illager castle that was near my base where I ended up killing Frostmaw in the first 100 days. And um, yeah, the sword lit the entire place on fire. And honestly, I know I worked super hard for this, but I, I kind of hated it. So you know what I had to do. I bought another copy of all of the enchanted books back at my house, and I was back at the farm where I easily racked up enough XP to recombine all of the books, and for some reason, this time everything was cheaper. The sword was only going to cost 100 levels, and it was technically better? Weird. Anyways, I sat here grinding more XP for a few minutes until I had my second god sword, apparently. And I named this beautiful weapon Fusion Flare after the signature move of the Pokemon Reshiram. And now that this beast was ready, it was time to see just how many drops I could get with Scavenger and Looting 5. 
And this thing was nuts. It now one-shot everything in here, including only two-shotting this mutant wither skeleton that managed to eat its way through two bars of my health. This thing did insane damage, even though I did technically have strength too. Anyways, after only the little bit of grinding that I had done with the sword, I had already gotten seven wither skull drops and just a couple of stacks of emeralds. Just a couple, winky face. For the final day, day 200, now that my sword was ready, there was one last thing for me to do before my next big fight. So I spent the first half of this day compiling all of the new enchantments that I had gathered so I could re-enchant and godify my set of dragon armor. Not to mention, I still had to name all of them. After compiling all of my enchantments, it was back to beating up the XP pinatas at the XP farm for mad stonks, and I combined all of the enchantments together into single books for each piece of armor, and they were surprisingly cheap. But boy, did that not last long. After finishing all my books, I re-enchanted my helmet, and it costed me 61 levels. Not to mention, I forgot to name it, at this point, it would cost me 39 more levels just to do that. Which isn't much in comparison to what I can make now, but I was really running out of time here. I continued grinding XP and adding all of the enchantments to each piece of armor until they were all finished. Also, for time's sake, I decided just to not name them because I had no clue what to name them for now. And these things were leagues above that basic protection for armor that I had before. I now had a Cult of version 5, which weakens magic damage I take, Icy Thorns 3, which works like thorns, but instead it slows enemies, Protection 6, which is cracked, I'm breaking 3 in mending, plus Respiration 4 on my helmet, and Feather Falling 8 on my boots, which technically isn't that useful because I currently don't take fall damage at all due to my spellstone anyways, but maybe in the future I would end up needing it. Either way, I was now more crazy strong than before, and while doing this, I may have ended up losing track of time, and it was night now. But, you know what? I promised you all a boss fight, and I was going to do a boss fight. So after cleaning up the rest of the mobs in the grinder, I started day 201, don't tell anyone, or as I would like to call it, bonus day, by getting some things in my inventory just in case things still manage to go bad, which I doubt with how crazy OP I've become at this point, but pro tip, never, no matter how strong you are in Minecraft, ever assume that you can't die, because you can die no matter what. So I brewed some of those potions of recall that I had mentioned before as a backup plan, and I set out to find my Everdawn portal from the first 100 days. And um, I could not find this building anywhere on the map because I may have stolen the waystone a while ago. So instead I had to use the blocks in my zeolator again downstairs in my base and I went through the portal. And if you don't know what this is yet, this was a dimension in the first 100 days that I lost a totem to and almost died inside of one of these towers. And this place was the home of none other than the alchemist. And this was actually such a cool experience. So after portaling to the dimension, I headed into this nearby tower to take this guy down. I began heading up the stairs, and if you didn't know, you can't break any blocks at all inside of this place. I made my way up to the first floor, and I saw these villagers being imprisoned by some vindicators. I took out the baddies, and I looted the first chest only to find a dungeon key. Apparently, you need to find four of these to get to the boss. I left those villagers there because I couldn't really help them because I can't break blocks, and I continued up the stairs where I quickly searched the next two rooms. And the first one was this cool little library maze that I quickly solved with my massive brain. And the other room brought back some bad memories. The witch in here was the one who basically one-shot me with her potion. But now, it was easy clap. She had nothing on me. I moved on to the fourth and final room, which looked like the alchemist's bedroom, and it had this cool little custom cat model with a curved tail that was just kind of sitting by the door. And there was an easy chest out in the open that had chest key number four. And now that I had all four keys and I found myself at the top of the tower, I right clicked the block in the center and I was teleported to this arena where I was joined by him, the alchemist. And uh, this fight was very well made, but I was a little way too overpowered for it. The animations and sound effects were top notch as I tanked every single hit. I kept smacking him down and the lowest he got me was literally by two hearts out of my three rows. Not a casual flex by the way. But anyways, I kept beating him down until he hit his final phase and I defeated him once and for all. And honestly, I am so glad that I didn't take this guy on the first time. 
because I would have 100% died in here. Once you come to this place, the only way out is like a potion of teleportation or yeah, that's basically it because you can't place down waypoints. If I came here in the first 100 days and I got stuck in this room, I would have died. So ironically, it turns out that I owe that witch my life. So now that I've defeated the alchemist and got my pretty awful rewards, it was time to leave. I went back to the portal, and upon arriving home, I placed out the trophy that I had apparently gotten, and it's actually pretty cool. It was this nice little gold plaque that said Alchemist on it. So maybe if we do 300 days in the future, I could take on the Everbright Dimension, which had the next boss known as the Summoner. But anyways, this has been 200 days of hardcore, better Minecraft. This series has been so much fun, and if you do all enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and also leave a comment down below, let me know what you think about it. And once again, I'd like to thank Apex Gaming for sponsoring this video. If you would like to pick up an amazing gaming PC to enhance your Minecraft experience, the link is in the description down below. And don't forget to use code PAIN at checkout for an additional 5% off your order. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and don't forget to check out my other videos on the screen now. This has been Pain Domination, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.